I've already mentioned the clone tool in an earlier film where we introduced some of the most useful tools that you'll find in Photoshop to help you edit your pictures and get them all sorted out and polished up looking lovely. Now we're going to take a slightly closer look at the clone stamp tools. When I say tools, I also want to talk to you about the healing brush tool as well because the clone stamp and the healing brush, they work really, really well together. But what are they? Well, <clears throat> let's take a look in sunny Photoshop. They live in the tool palette down here on the left. Here, this one here is the clone stamp and a couple of spaces above there's a picture of a little bit of elastoplast or something which is the healing brush tool. The clone stamp does pretty much what it sounds like. It will clone one part of a picture into another place. It's very simple to do. Let's have a look. We've got lovely Lorna here. If I press the Alt key you can probably see that my circle turns into a little sort of crosshair gun sight. So where I press, I press the Alt key, I put that little circle onto Lorna's eye and we're going to give her a third eye here and then put my cursor say in the middle of her forehead and just paint away and <laughs> I'm sorry, I know I'm a kid, but there you go. There we go, we've given Lorna a third eye and it is not a good look, I have to confess. So let's get rid of it. But that's as simple as that. You can just pick up one part of a picture and put it somewhere else. It is really useful for tidying things up. The healing brush, as opposed to just taking one area of a picture and cloning it into another place, that clones textures. So you can pick up the texture from one place and put it into another place and it will blend the colours together so that it all works and sort of mixes in seamlessly. And this is why they're so good when they're used together because the, the clone stamp tool can be a little bit harsh around the edges and then you can tidy it up. Anyway, without more ado, let's have a little look about how we use them. Before you start to use them, it's worth getting Photoshop set up. You notice I had a little crosshair thing going on. That's really useful when you want to pick up an area to clone from because you can be super, super precise with what you're cloning. And you set that up in Photoshop's edit menu. You pop down to preferences. You'll get another little drop out to the side here and then we can go to cursors and it will bring up this palette. You can see it's already got cursors highlight. <clears throat> painting cursors of which healing brush and clone stamp are, are both sort of painting cursor tools. I'd set that onto the normal brush tip. That means you'll get this type of a circle here and it will give you the diameter of the brush that you're using so you know how big an area you're going to cover. In this little window here on the right other cursors. You have the option of standard or precise and this is where you can tell it to switch on the crosshair for being very very precise when you press the alt key and tell it where to clone from. I've already got mine set up but you want normal brush tip and precise and click OK and we're all ready to rock and roll. If you want to change the size of your brush let me just go into the clone stamp for example you just right click on an image and you can just kind of drag the little slider across as to how large you would like that to be or how small you would like it to be. You can then adjust the hardness. By hardness what I mean is how much it fades into the image. If I just go and get a largish brush size and give it a hard edge and just I'll give you a demonstration here. If I just clone something from Lorna's top there and put a line on her forehead it has a very hard edge. If I quickly pop into there and put it down minimum hardness and do the same thing again, you can see it's got a very soft fuzzy edge. And it's a call you have to make when you're using the tool. Do you need a hard edge? Like if you're cloning up against, say, the eaves of a building or something which has a very defined line, or do you need a soft edge so it fades in a bit better? Very useful. Okay, so how do we start using them? Well, for very simple blemishes and things, sort of on a portrait, you can just use the healing tool completely on its own. Let's suppose you've got a picture of somebody and they've got some spots and you want to get rid of the spots because otherwise they're going to say, oh, why did you take a picture of me with spots? Well, you can do that all on its own with the healing tool. Now in this portrait, Lorna doesn't have any spots. I'm just going to zoom in on her face. However, Lorna does have freckles and they look absolutely splendid. But let's, for the purposes of this exercise, pretend they're spots. 
You can see it's still sort of got a little dot of red going on, which is what I picked up from her top. So I'm just going to do that so it, it hasn't anymore. We've got a freckle. We've got a couple of other little freckles going on here, one on her nose. Let's say you wanted to lose them. We'll find a brush which will cover the freckle. That nearly does. I'm going to make it just very, very slightly larger. You right click, choose your brush. There's your hardness. There's another setting here for spacing. I don't want to go into that, otherwise it's going to get much too long-winded, but you can play with that yourself. The most important ones are diameter and hardness. That's the harshness of the edge of the clone. That looks to be a better size. Just click up here. All I have to do is just click on an area of texture of her face. So let's say this area here looks to be about right. I click there. I pick that up. It's now become the brush. When I go over the freckle, you can even watch it disappear. Quick click and a little wiggle and it's gone. Let's say I want to do the same down here with that freckle there. Maybe a little bit up there on that one there. See how easy it is to just very quickly clone out some spots or marks, or in this case, freckles. Let's go and have a look at something else. Lovely picture of an old motorbike. Now that's very, very me, isn't it? But we've got this horrible telephone wire cutting across the picture here. Let's have a go at getting rid of it. This will mean a combination of clone stamp and healing brush. First off, I'm gonna zoom in. I wanna have a good old look. Let's have a look around here because this area here is a bit of is, is a bit complicated, isn't it? The phone wire is sort of mixing around with the bike. Really simply, let's go and get our stamp tool. You can see that is much, much, much too big. It's still remembered the color of Lorna's face and that's what we've got going on there. So if I just pick up a bit of blue sky by Alt key, click, and now we're cloning from blue sky, you can see it will go over there. But that brush is much too big. You can also see it's a very, very soft edge we've got going on because in the center of the circle of my brush, it's, it's got a bit of clone going on but it's not enough. Right click, let's just make the brush a bit smaller to begin with. I think you can go down a bit from that. There we go. Let's make it a lot harder so that it's sort of more cleanly defined. Look at that, that's a bit better, isn't it? I'll go slightly smaller again, I think. Oops. There we go, that'll do me nicely. <clears throat> think about where you're cloning from because you need to clone something which is going to match where the wire was. It's no good me cloning from over here somewhere and going like this because as you can see that doesn't match does it it's just a bit of a mess you could fix it after with a healing brush but come on let's do it properly so I'm going to clone from just underneath for a moment and just kind of run that up there look at that you see now there is a line but we're going to mend that in a minute with the healing brush and I'm just going to get in roughly around here like this take out some of that zoom in with the zoom tool get very close Go back to the clone stamp. I think you're getting the idea. We make the brush much, much smaller so that it kind of fits in there nicely. Now we just sort of start cloning in very carefully up to that cable adjuster. Same on the other edge there. There we go, perfect. Oh, a little bit missing in there. Use the shift, shift bar. Press the shift bar, you get a little hand and you can just drag across your image like that. Clone from just below there. We'll just run that in there up against that cable. Take a bit of that out of there. We're going to go in here and just take out this. Now this brush could be too big for this. I don't know, I'm getting away with it, but it's possibly a little too big to do some really nice, neat sort of work. Space bar, come back out. Go and get the healing brush. Now we're going to fix this sort of darker blue um, <clears throat> area, which is left over from cloning. Healing brush, Just drag it down a bit. That brush is too big, make it a bit smaller. That's good. We're gonna clone from up here and just kind of blend this in like this. You might have to do it a couple of times, but just sort of blending around the edges, you can see we're, we're, we're losing the harshness of where we just cloned from. Keep an eye on your little crosshair too, because suppose it's there and you're cloning in that direction, you're gonna suddenly pick up that you see where it's tried to blend it in and it can't just keep an eye on it while you're doing it here we go a bit of that in there I think that's a job well done okay we'll come over the other side we're just going to do in close work here as well to sort of blend it in closer to that cable adjuster here we go lovely job zoom Z on the keyboard 
alt key, just take it out a bit. Here we go, look at that. While I'm in the healing brush, let's just deal with that. I'm not in the healing brush, I'm in the zoom tool. Make that a bit bigger, it's too big. Don't forget, the size of the brush you set is also the size of the area it will clone from. So if you wanted to clone from in a very tight little area, sort of under the handlebars there, you'd have to use a much, much smaller brush. That looks to me to be about the right size. We're gonna get rid of the palette, click up here. We're just gonna kind of whiz that around. Look at that, you see, and it's all blending that in really, really nicely. So it looks natural. Now, with something as fine as this phone wire, you could possibly get away with working simply with the healing tool. But I think, whoop, you see, I just whizzed over there and it made a nasty mess. But I think you're better off just to try and stick with doing it properly in the first place. With the clone tool. Here we go. We just run up over here. Using a much smaller brush, you don't make so much mess, but I wanted to show you what the difference was. And we've almost removed it. I'm not going to go the whole way because there's something else I want to show you. Healing brush. Click underneath, run that around like that, and there we go, and it blends it all in for you, and you have a nice seamless missing telephone wire. If you want to get really picky, I just want to zoom in and show you, Think about this when you're doing it. There is a reflection of that phone wire in the chrome of the petrol tank. It's in there, see that? You could clone that out as well. You just use smaller brushes, get in tighter, be careful, work slowly. Here's another little use for it. So here we go, a little commercial shot. My lovely friend Jen's Naked Jam. It is the best jam in the world. Go and buy some if you get the chance. Look online. Um, fly in here. <laughs> it's a comedy show, this one, isn't it? It's a lovely picture, but I just find this bubble up here very, very slightly annoying. It's just sort of too much. Let me zoom in on it and you can have a closer look. I've zoomed in a little too much, but that bubble I find to be slightly annoying, but it's in a very difficult place to clone because we've got this highlight running up the side of the jar We've also got the very top sort of meniscus of the jam itself running across here. If I just start to clone from, let's get a bigger brush. Yeah, it's probably about the right size, maybe slightly more. Here we go. If I just start cloning from somewhere indiscriminately, we're gonna mess up those lines as you can see. So you have to think about it. How would we clone that out? Well, the first thing I'd do would be to take out a couple of these smaller bubbles just here. So I'm going to make the brush slightly smaller, pick up from about here, and I'm just going to work away on a couple of these little bubbles around here. There we go. That's pretty good. And the only reason I'm doing this is to make this nice and clean and smooth. Healing brush. Just kind of mix and match that in a bit so that the colors blend nicely there we go that's pretty good like that you see it's turned black it's because my little pickup cursor as i move down has gone over the top of the black label don't forget to watch out for that so how am i going to lose that big ugly bubble well think it through my way of doing it is going to be to clone upwards so i'm going to take where this line is along the edge of the highlight and replace that area up there with it by sort of moving around from side to side. That is obviously gonna put a line up there, but then I'm gonna clone from the right and go left to repair it. It's really simple. Clone stamp tool. I'd say that brush is about the right size. This is where the precise cursor gets really, really useful because I wanna get exactly lined up on the edge of that highlight and the little crosshairs let me do it. I click, I've picked that up. Now I can move my cursor up and if I keep the Alt key pressed, I can still line it up exactly on the edge of that highlight. Let go and I'm ready to start cloning. So I just come up here like this, very, very carefully up to the edge of that meniscus. I just kind of clone that in like that and I'm doing this fairly roughly. <clears throat> now I need to repair the damage by cloning in this direction across there. Again, press the little Alt key 
I'm going to clone from about here. I think that should fit in there nicely. There we go. And I can lose another bubble along the way. I can just take that across to there like that. So I've now replaced it. There's a little bit of messiness going on in there. I can zoom in, <clears throat> use a slightly smaller brush, and I can start fixing things. But I'm just going to use the healing brush just oh I did it from the wrong place excuse me I'm just going to kind of push that in across here and blend away ever so slightly where the clone stamp's been here we go and it's just starting to come back together so there we go that's a very rough introduction but I think you can see already the power of this if I just go back and put back in the bubble and I did that pretty roughly and pretty quickly Clone stamp and healing brush, they work hand in hand together and they are phenomenally useful for whenever you want to just tidy something up a bit. Remove a little bit of litter, a cigarette end lying on the, on the footpath, you know, next to a couple whose wedding you've just photographed, telephone wires, things like that. Phenomenal tool. Get your Photoshop out and go and give them a go for yourself.